Welcome back to Gabriel Knight 3. And we're in the attic. And we're gonna finally find out what's in that trunk. And okay, Retro Kaiser's here too. It's a baby's foot! It's a... Oh my god. It's just a doll. It's just a doll. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, yeah. The Thank goodness. Yeah, she she's still hearing the baby noise, but that's not where it was coming from. I wouldn't want anyone down there to see me. All right. I'm looking around. Uh, uh, furniture is in storage, or someone sits up here once in a while. Old books. I wonder who could be sitting up here. Looks like they've been up here a while. <laughs> All right, and now we're gonna go down into. Uh, Montrose office. You'll notice a big portrait of himself on the wall. There. Are you sure his name's not yeah, Count Montrose? He's crazy. looking pretty creepy. <laughs> Alright, and this painting is like one of our biggest hints that there's something really weird about this place. Why does that face look odd to me? That looks like the guy I saw upstairs. Madeline called him Montro. Why does that face look odd to me? Uh, yeah, I, I misclicked there. Really Grace actually got down from the chair she was on. You can, I think you didn't, didn't hear it. <laughs> Something weird with his left eye. Oh, wow. And now we looked into the oh, eye of the painting. That is bizarre. It's part man, it's part... Yeah. Grail. <laughs> I have no idea what that might mean. Yeah, you'll notice that, that there's something weird about the eye. That is and then song. when you look up, up close. Part man, part grail. Part man, part grail. Is that, yeah. I have no idea what it says. It looks like Latin. And he's got a book that seems to be written in Latin, so everybody's got books. Why that conveniently the main characters can't read. read. Anyway, French dictionaries and something old too. Okay, and now we're gonna look into his drawer. This is another completely additional thing. Gods among us, the immortals. There's a lot of these uh, immortals here. You'll notice there's the like Saint Germain who's in the church and. The Wandering Jew. Something and Dennis Rodman. They can't seriously mean. <laughs> nah. No way. What a bunch of nonsense. Okay, and now, what's there under the desk? Ah. There's a button. <laughs> I remember this part. This was in one of your videos. Uh, one of your list videos. Oh yeah, probably was. And probably in the series review as well. So this was the scene that's in the back of the box as well. Is these heads with the beams coming out. They're just shining out into the room. And when I played through the game the first time and I noticed I didn't, didn't, never saw this scene. Like, I, there must be something in the game that I've missed. And true enough, it, there was. This is, by the way, this is the easiest puzzle in the friggin' game. Like, all you have to do is turn all of these heads, left or right, uh, they all have to turn in the same direction, once, and that's all you have to do, so they, uh, so that they create a pentagram. Evil. Yeah. Like, this is, it, it doesn't matter, you turn them left or you turn them right, but you have to turn them all in the same direction. That's all you have to do. So it's really just time consuming. It's not really like a proper puzzle anyway. <laughs> There's a part of like this a little bit a little bit like this in the Dead or Alive movie as well, where the Christie like notices a statue and she notices it's weird that its head is kind of facing the wrong way and then they, they turn it and they discover that it's Opens like a secret passage, as it as it does here as well. That's great. I think. <laughs> I love that reaction. That's great. I think. 
something tells me that's not oh, just Grace an artistic this game. statement. You're so full of, um... Yeah. yeah. And I yell at Gabriel for taking stupid risks. And now we're in this uh, spooky basement. <laughs> we went from the spooky attic to the spooky basement. Well, I guess this really is a winery. More wine. Okay. That's a yeah, good thing. more wine. And I love the comment she says when we find the wine casks. Like, that's the... That I, it, it just warms the cockles of my heart. What she says about it. Jeez. That looks like it belongs in a crypt. Yeah, it definitely does kind of feel like a crypt with those hole, indescribable holes in the walls or the indentations. Okay, I almost accidentally went to the end already. Oh, here's the wine casks. I'm guessing that there's wine in those casks. And this. They do give the place a nice Edgar Allan Poe feeling, don't they? <laughs> give the place a nice Edgar Allan Poe feeling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, never more. <laughs> uh, yeah, that I love. That sound is coming Edgar from behind Allen that Poe. door. Uh, I made. A, I've even made a top ten of my favorite Poe stories. Oh, great! Okay, that's it's where the wine press. baby noises were coming from. It's the wine press. And if you Ooh. get thrown out, uh, you'll find the big cry. Big cry. Two balls caught in the wine press. <laughs> I'm not exactly sightseeing down here. Yeah, but no, it's the press that's making the noise. And if you got thrown out, you you discover that if you go back to the, the back of the house, that huge. that At the least door. I think it's a great press. That the door that the door is actually doors are open, and you just get here straight away, but you don't get to go through Montrose's office. It looks as old as this basement. There's the old lady, and we're gonna go talk to her. Excuse me. Oh, mademoiselle, douce mademoiselle, si jeune, si jolie, si appétissante. You don't speak English, do you? I'll just. Bon bleu, mademoiselle. Bon bleu. Let go. I don't know what you're saying. Let go. Bon bleu. Aimeriez-vous des bon bleus? Yeah, throw the old lady into the wine presser. Oh, préféreriez-vous uniquement du jus? Hein? Un jus tout bleu, un jus sucré, un jus de raisin presté à coups de poing! I mean, to be fair, I would get freaked out too if an old lady started screaming at me in French. Okay, that was weird. <laughs> You mean it hasn't happened to you yet? No. <laughs> there you are. I couldn't figure out where I don't know any French ladies. I thought I heard something. Yeah? Like what? Nothing. I mean, it was just a wine press. You shouldn't go check stuff out alone, Grace. Especially not when me or Gabe are around to go with you. Well, you were occupied. What? You mean Maddie? No, I was just... There are two little lost lambs. And how sweetly they chat, little heads in a row. Madeline, I was just telling Grace, uh... Never mind, you are both adults, but we are moving on now. Thanks a lot, Mom. All right, and now... I do anything. Get ready for the big... Doctor, shocker moment of the game. The definitive. Uh, Dr. Wen mentioned that the chair is connected to the devil. We're going to the church. devil's armchair Without now. Without temptation. Yes, I have held that theory. But a more interesting one links the phrase to the pentacles. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, we found Mallory and McDougal. Looks like they've been drained too. Oh, yep. What is it? Prince, James's men, we, we just found their bodies. Where? The devil's armchair. The tour group found the bodies? Yes. Did you notice anything suspicious about people's reactions? Let me see, let me see. Everyone seemed to be Okay, this surprised. next bit is a bit tricky. Yes. Is you have to Lady Howard. Was quite a performance. You have to uh hmm. kind of check it out. Yeah. Gabriel goes check out how everybody is reacting to the um, 
You don't mind, do you? To the desk no. because he thinks that's a big clue uh, <laughs> as to who might be involved. And there's different ways to do this, different parts of it that you'll miss out on. And I think we, what we're going to miss out on is that Madeline's talking on her phone. Uh, and we never find that out uh, in this part. Monsieur Knight? <gasps> what I'm go doing now is I'm going straight to the phones because Bukele's say, making a phone call, and so we're going to record Elgia, that. They find two dead bodies. Oh, I shudder to think on it. Oh. And now notice yeah, how much more sad, pixelated yeah. the painting is again Ooh, in the sure. background. <laughs> you so mildly are putting it. I am relieved I saw no such thing. And lucky for you, monsieur, that you stay at the hotel this morning. Uh -huh. It wasn't the maid that killed him, was it? <laughs> is that all you've heard about it? Oh, who could talk well, such obviously things? It's, it the was guests, the, I the believe baby they kidnappers. are all most traumatized. Maybe not all. The two men with the trunk. <laughs> we have to find... We, we still haven't found them. Okay, there's Bukele, and now we gotta record the... Uh... And again, you can tell, definitely, that Bukele's voice actor doesn't... It's not a native Italian speaker. The pronunciation is really good, so they must have had like a language coach on board, but... But his like intonation is like so artificial. Si, <laughs> si. <laughs> Due uomini. Li ho visiti proprio io. Questa mattina. Non ne ho la più pallida idea. Ma penso che sia importante. Non sembravano gente del posto. Non saprei. The razza bianca, probabilmente. And uh, we, what we will we will find out how Lady Howard is, is reacting. <laughs> we kind of did get a little taste of it already, but uh, we're gonna actually go listen in on them through the door and also talk to Wilkes. But I think if you go listen to Ma in on Madeline, Madeline, and then go listen in on um, Lady Howard and Estelle, you actually miss Bukele's phone call. So it's, it's one of these situations where you have to pick which parts uh, you want to uh, focus on. A catch-22. Yeah. And I think it's dependent on... And uh, you, you can get like a certain maximum amount of points based on that. Hey, Wilkes. Night. You missed the tour this morning, didn't you? Slip in. Yeah. Well, you never believe what happened. We was going to see this armchair, right? And we comes up over the hill and blam! I heard. Shit! You should have seen it, mate. Worst damn thing I ever saw. And I've seen some things. I bet. They was just sitting there. These gashes across their throats like big red smiles or something. It was horrible. Throats cut? That's right. Say, why don't you take a load off, have a drink? No, thanks. But I appreciate the info. Yeah. No problem. Yeah, and you notice those glasses on the table. We're gonna use those uh, later to get the uh, fingerprints from Wilkes. And this is also a second chance for you to get Bukele's prints if you didn't get them in the his hotel room. And now, yeah, here, here we're going to listen in on the ladies. Yeah, <laughs> Lady Howard wasn't faking her, her, uh, her uh, as, as Mosley later puts it, her little hissy fit. No, I'm an artist. I've trained myself for years to empathize and still empathize. It's a gift, I tell you. I understand. No, you don't. The pain, I feel it right here. Oh, the sight of the throats, Estelle. The throats! You must calm yourself. Why don't you take it? Yeah, that's, that's the thing. Estelle has, oh, Estelle has this lovely, like, North English, like, North English accent. And Lady Howard is, uh... Is, like, a more... Traditional, uh, RP English. 
But then again, uh, we'll later find out that she comes from a slightly richer background. Okay, we missed. This is the part we missed. Is Bukeli coming out of the? Is Bukeli coming out of the phone booth? But I. Uh, but if we had stuck around for that, I think we would have missed Lady Howard, uh, Lady Howard and Estelle's argument there, or not an argument, but her freaking out. Are you gonna interview the rooster? A what? <laughs> the rooster. Maybe he did it. Roost. You oh. <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> Ooh, looking for something, do you? <laughs> yeah, the rooster that they keep calling a chicken. <laughs> Good afternoon, Abbe Arno. That's a really Abbe creepy Abbe. icon Surely to I dead men. Mr. Knight. <laughs> My goodness, man! We found two men. <laughs> that is to say, the entire tour group stumbled upon. Well. Two men have been brutally murdered! Huh. You are not surprised? Well, should I be? I don't know what you mean. You ever meet these two men? No, never! And you don't know Ooh, who might have... Uh, you know. You toy with me. You have heard. I don't appreciate your games, Mr. Knight. Well, I'm not much for games myself. Then let us terminate this discussion, eh? It has been a most trying day as it is. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I missed. And now it's yeah, I know he's lying, but maybe I should let him stew for a while. Gabe really keeps Abbe kind of. It's just a decorative post. Hang in. Like, we do, we do kind of go talk to him a few more times, but. Uh, this might be a little bit of a spoiler, but we eventually found out that Abbe doesn't actually have a whole lot to do with the blood of the game. The sacred heart of Jesus. Uh. You gotta hand it to us Catholics, babe. We really know our anatomy. Now, that's a funny line. We missed it, but like the burn, there were burning hearts of uh, Jesus in those windows. Oh, it's like a Catholic image, a classic Catholic imagery. And here we go into the armchair of the devil. But I think we're gonna take a little detour. Going up there, where the sign is, is where the bodies are. But if you turn around here, you'll notice that there's c uh, tire tracks in the dirt on the opposite side. There are some tire tracks in the dirt. Well, that's exactly what I said. <laughs> and guess what's here? Mallory and McDougal's car. That's the car Prince James's men arrived in. Mallory and McDougal could have parked the car here, but I don't know why they'd bother to hide it. It's more likely that the killers stashed it here. Maybe they grabbed Mallory and McDougal somewhere else and brought them here to be executed. All right, and uh, now what we're going to be doing is Gabe's going to take his uh, notepad, we're going to make a copy of the tire treads, <laughs> and we're going to use that to track where Mallory and McDougal were uh, driving the previous night. And being a detective. Dick detective. Yes. <laughs> I, I accidentally said dick detective, not detective. Um, yeah, being a detective sounds like a lot of tedious work. That's gruesome, man. Wow. Pretty damn grim. Christ! Did you do that on purpose? Not at all. <laughs> we scared mostly. <laughs> so, what the hell's up with this? I'm guessing these are Prince James, man. Am I right? Yeah, for once. <sighs> Which I'm mostly Sadly, once at a crime scene in the, the first lenses. game as well, but he looks really out of place now with that friggin' <laughs> shirt of his. And this is where we're suggesting, like, who who could be it responsible. Has to be the kidnappers, don't you think? If so, they're a hell of a lot nastier than we thought. And weirder. This is no ordinary killing. Look at him. And this is a, about who might have I think I might have screwed yeah. this part up. Like and we should have been looking at the bodies first, and then suggest up the abbe's butt, maybe. Who, who it was. You mentioned something on the tour about not having a. Car. We're talking about it the abbe. Could be a ruse. Could be. Could but be a ruse. <laughs> I love that. And not exactly <laughs> lightweights. He did seem intimidated at the church. He could have called someone in though. That quickly? I suppose it's possible. 
The blame game rant. thing, though, it's it is kind of funny, and I don't really understand what the point of it is. But I, 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 there is like a big uh, point sum that you could have done this if you'd done it properly, which I don't think I did. Uh, oh, now we're just asking about how the tour group reacted. Notice anything suspicious when the group saw the dead bodies? Hmm. Madeline sure as hell didn't want to leave. She looked like she's just itching to check things out. Fortunately, that Howard lady was throwing a hissy fit. And Maddie didn't have much of a choice. Not sure why she'd be so interested in a couple of dead guys. Oh? And why are you so interested? I'm helping you! Yeah. And because it's not it's the non-accelerated well, graphics, the done. bodies look yeah, again oh, super blocky. Uh could be vampires. I love that Nosferatu yeah. style uh, uh, vampire logo that, that you saw there. Stoker, Bram, <laughs> Stoker. Thank you. Not the kind Stoker wrote about. Take a look at these guys. Okay, and now I think. No, no, we have still one more option. Gabe just says that he doesn't know what it is, but now we're going to get to look at the bodies a little bit more. First clue who did this. It's too bad. Look around. Maybe something will come up. An idea, or your breakfast, one of them. Because you did notice that they were really pale. Mm-hmm, like yeah. they were drained. Yeah, Gabe. It's Prince James's two men, Gabe's gonna right. remark soon that there's no blood on the clothes. I don't see any blood. Yeah. Weird, huh? Throats opened up like a Christmas package and not a drop of the red stuff anywhere. I like how the dead boys it's actually looks like they're sitting in an armchair. Right. <laughs> They're both completely white. That's because they've been drained like a couple of cans of tuna. Curious. I know what you're thinking. But if it was vampires, why the long gash? It'd be like trying to drink from the lip of a mixing bowl. Maybe they got really big mouths. Like you. <laughs> sure. A vampire cult founded by Mick Jagger. Oh, this all makes perfect sense to me now. Oh, a vampire cult run by Mick Jagger. This makes a whole lot of sense now. <laughs> That's a clean <laughs> gash. Indeed. I love the... Thank even though this is a really grim scene, like, I, I just love the repartee that these guys are going. Let's look around and talk about stuff as we find it. All right. And now, we're gonna discover where the blood went. Uh, no, not yet. That must be the so-called armchair. Yeah, but it's, it's almost the end of the episode, so... He has that green tinge he gets at crime scenes. Hell, I probably have it, too. They've been drained of blood. All right, now we're going Shit, Mose, get over here. What is it? Is that what I think it is? I think it's what you think it is. Looks like it. Ugh. Oh man, and this intense scene is where we're gonna end it this time. So join us next. Oh, another cliffhanger! Yeah, another cliffhanger! Yeah, see you on the next one. Bye.